video is going to be showing you how to make a, a electromagnetic a drill press device or something from a microwave transformer. This thing I got, you know, you get it from a microwave, you get it for free at the junkyard and you just pull this thing out um, where you can get it, you know, wherever. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get yourself like a little cutting disc. This is a grinding disc. I, I can't find a cutting disc right now, so it doesn't matter. So you take your cutting disc and your grinder and you just make a eighth inch groove and you just cut it all the way down here see this groove or you could use a dremel you just grind that away you know and make a slot at this junction between this uh, vertical part and the horizontal and you do the same to the other side you see I have this groove you know you just get your grinding disc and you just cut in there the length of uh, the transformer then what you do is you get yourself a chisel and you just uh, you know pry it with a hammer give it some taps pops off you know, the, the tensile strength, uh, whatever glue or however this thing is joined together, you exceed it, it breaks off. Um, put this to the side. Then what's usually in here is, you know, this low voltage winding. I mean, sorry, high voltage winding. This is going to be in here, and you have to pull it out. You know, you could pull it out if you're strong with your hands, or you could use a, um, you know, like a, like a pliers. You know, you just yank this thing out of here. It's kind of hard. It takes like 10 minutes. Very annoying, but once that's done, then you pull it out. Now, the th key thing in here is you have to remove the, this high voltage winding, and you know it's high voltage. with It's very thin. You see this wire? Very, very thin. This wire is thick. You don't want to remove the thick wire. If you do that, your transformer not kind of be useless. It'll melt down. The reason why it'll melt down is because um, resistance of these windings are very low. Um, so if you look here, if I get my voltmeter and I put this on resistance, right, I, I put a, a probe here and a probe here, what am I reading, you know, 0.9 ohms, 0.8, so, you know, this thing doesn't even have the best tolerance, it could even be lower, like it can't, it doesn't have um, two decimal points only has one, so, you know, it could be half an ohm, you know, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 ohms is what this thing says, so it's 0 0.8 or less. So, you know, well, actually, one ohm is accurate. I think this thing is accurate. Never mind. It's around one ohm. So, you know, voltage is uh, current times resistance, right? So if you're feeding five volts into this, right, a resistance of one ohm, this is going to have five amps. This wire is really only rated for, like, five amps continuously. Um... I can't. The reason why it's rated for five amps continuously is because this is from a 700 watt microwave. So 700 watts divided by 120 volts is like five amps. So this winding sees five amps in its daily operation. Um, it's designed for five amps, right? If it if it was, I'm sure if you get a 1500 watt microwave, 2000 watt microwave, you know you could feed more current through this. But this one's not rated for that. Um, obviously, your high voltage winding, wherever I put that thing, um, where is it? Where did it go? Come on. Oh, here it is. It's on the grinding disc. This thing is only rated for half an amp. This thing puts out, you know, 3,000 volts, 2,000 volts at half an amp, uh, a third of an amp. So, five amps will just fry this thing up fast. Um, it's unfortunate. It really is. Because, as you could see, um, you know, with the equations here, you know, the number of turns, the bigger, N is the number of turns. So if you have a thousand turns, you know, you're going to get a higher B field. So if this has ten times the amount of turns, your electromagnet will probably be ten times stronger, um, assuming this coil doesn't really saturate these laminations. You're going to have a much stronger electromagnet because um, it's proportional to the number of turns and the current. So um, what you can do is you can um, maybe if you water cool this or like uh, you know have the have your uh, thing in like a vat of uh, vegetable oil or something and if you could cool this coil then that would be really good for a drill press vise um, that would be really nice so but I'm not doing that that's a lot of work and then what I do is I just JB welded it to this uh, steel plate um, and then this will just go on my drill press so you can see my drill press or whatever. I just, you know, I drilled some holes and that's that. So let me show you it in operation. What you need is you need a lab power supply. 
um, or some sort of power supply source. So I'm going to put this on, as you could see, so we could see how strong it is. So you could see here it's pulling 5 amps at 2 volts. This power supply puts out a maximum um, current of 5 amps. So it's, it's already saturating this power supply. It can't dump more um, current into it because it's maxing out. You know, it's maxing out. I could change the voltage, and it, it just can't supply more current. So that's why it's, it's only 2 amps, 2 volts, when in reality, if I remove it, it could feed up to 30. But let's see. Come on. Get in there. Okay. Um, you could see the arcs are really big because this is DC. DC has bigger arcs than AC. Not 100% sure why that is, but it just is a fact of life. Um, now we can see how strong it is. These magnets are very, very strong. Um, you'll be surprised. Like I have here like a little pipe wrench. I put a pipe wrench on here. Let me see. Hold on. Turn this off. Ooh, see, even it takes a few seconds for the magnetic field to dump from this uh, power supply. It's still supplying current. But um, as you can see, I have my pipe wrench here, and I'm going to try and, um, you know, let, let, let me try this. Hold on. i got to rotate it this way. And you can see that even with, you know, this, this is a lot of torque. This is, you know, two feet roughly. And I'm, you know, putting, I only weigh like 130 pounds, but, you know, you know, I could kind of turn it, but it does take a lot of, you know, with your hands, you could never turn this. You know, this is impossible with your hands. Um, it's really stuck on there. It's, you know, this thing's, you know, this thing's not really coming off that well, if possible, if any. Yeah, it's not really coming off. So this this is a good drill press vise. Um, as you could see, I had a real, it was a funny question, you know, it was whether, um, what was it? Where where is my um, my um, so I mean yeah I, I can't find my other thing but basically uh, um, you know the this field the the flux is proportional to the area um, so the thing is is if you put a thin piece of metal the, the reason why this is good because you know these smaller things like you know you know these these smaller things you know they you could pull them off. You know, they don't stick that well. And that's expected, right? Because, you know, you know, this one you could kind of remove, but it's, you can't yank it perpendicularly. It's not possible. Um, the reason is because when you do this, you're applying a torque. So, um, and also, oh, one last thing I forgot. Um, the strength, and also once you give it a little torque, the magnetic field gets really weak. Because the magnetic field, um, when you have an air gap, the, the magnetic field can't go through the air that well. It, it only, air is not permeable to the field, so it, it, it loses, uh, it becomes weak. So that's why you could do this, but you can never pull this vertically. It's impossible. This is good for like a lifting magnet or something. So another thing I forgot to mention is you want to make sure that this is ground flat. Like you see all these marks and stuff, that's not good. Um, because the uh, the magnetic field is proportional to distance squared, um, any forces like uh, gravity or whatever. So any small gaps, you know, if this is cut, like gaps, you know, air gaps, like that will weaken the field. So you want to make sure that, you know, this is relatively, um, you know, flat. Like when I made the cut marks, they were little burrs, so that had to be sanded down because those burrs will interfere you know, that'll create a gap. Um, so you don't want that. And then also, you'll find that um, this thing, um, so I mean, yeah, that's more or less all I wanted to say. Um, I mean, this is how you make your magnetic drill press thing. And all you gotta do is, if I remove this, you know, you know, you, uh, you, know, you what you gotta do is just, I have it screwed on here, but, um, you know, basically, let's see. Come on. And then this, all you got to do is 
you know, it's a, it's a dandy little thing. You know, you just glue it onto a steel plate, and you just, you know, put this on here. And then whenever you're doing any drilling operations or milling, or you just use the magnetic vise. Um, so, any questions, um, please put them in the comments. Um, like, so, like I said, the most important thing is just make sure this you're not giving this thing more than 5, 6 amps of current. And, um, you know, yeah. So, have a good one. Um, Bye.